Okay. Welcome everybody. Welcome to Ada Gallery and Art Center and uh, Richard Perry's Art Talk. We're thrilled to have him here tonight. Um, thank all of you for uh, braving the ugly weather out there. It's a little damp and uh, stormy and uh, going to get cold again tomorrow. So that will be an even more of an adventure, I think. But thank you for braving it tonight and we're anxious to hear what Richard has to say. And, uh, I'm Trip Anderson, the executive director here, if you don't know me, thank you for coming. I'm going to introduce Mila Pinnigan, our exhibition manager, who is the one responsible for, uh, and the committee for selecting the artists that show here, and hanging all this work, and keeping the artists happy, and Mila will introduce Richard. Mila. Thanks, Trip. Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce Rich Perry. Rich is a born and bred New Englander, and he grew up just outside of Boston, and currently lives in Westport uh, with his wife, Betsy, who's also here, and brave to drive up from <laughs> there today. Um, Rich's photographs all tell a story, and they do it with his use of light, the textures, um, and these very special places that he found over four different trips on 366. Um, and although I've never traveled uh, down at 66 in these photographs, I feel like I, I really have. Um, and Rich has many wonderful stories. Um, I'm sure he'll share at least a few of them with us uh, this evening. So without any further ado, thank you, Rich, for being here. Well, I am delighted to be here. Let's get one question out of the way. What color was the Corvette on the Route 66 TV show? Red? No. It was a black and white show. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I don't know what the color was. <laughs> There you go. I th well, you know, I, that's one of those funny things I think about Corvettes is, is a lot of us envision them as being red, that that's something. I mean, why would you buy a Corvette any other color than red? I mean, it really ought to be red. Um, Route 66, the Mother Road, sometimes called the Will Rogers Highway. Um, it opened in 1926, um, it, but although it was not fully finished until 1938, it goes from Chicago to L.A., if you remember the song, on Route 66. Um, it was not fully paved until 38, um, and it is no, I will tell you right now, it's no longer fully paved either. Um, there are parts that, there's lots of parts you cannot drive on. Um, we tried to follow it as much as we possibly could, as a group of four of us, um, and we, we had to turn around several times. Um, and we're lucky to turn around one time. Went through eight states. I have to write these down. Arizona, California, Illinois, Kansas, uh, Missouri, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Texas. Um, well over 2,000 miles. Um, Cyrus Avery was on the board of the Federal Highway, and he's the one who gets a lot of credit for the idea and for actually building it. Um, he pushed it um, to be created, and he promoted it. Um, and it was uh, him who gets credit for it. Uh, it ran from Chicago to L.A., now actually to Santa Clara, um, and it literally ran, because in 1927, there was a Bunyan Derby, love that name, um, <laughs> with Charles C. Cash and Carrie Pyle, who started the, uh, the, started the run cross-country. Uh, so it actually, that run went from New York all the way to the end of Route 66. Um, I don't know that they did it more than once. Um, I'm quite sure I wouldn't have done it even once. Um, it was, though, though in that race were people like Red Granger. Um, does anybody know who Red Granger is? Yeah, yeah, an old time football player. Um, and it opened up mobility for a lot of people. It opened up all kinds of um, economic opportunities because we could now transport um, from the Chicago area all the way out to California. Um, as we came into World War II, 
um, all of a sudden we found ourselves, uh, for the first time in our history, having to defend a western coast from, um, from the, uh, Japan and so forth who were out in that direction. And so it became a, a, a passageway for troops on Route 66. Um, it was also during the bust, Dust Bowl, 1930s, um, when everything seemed to dry up and blow away most of it. Um, so it's interesting to see, for me anyway, it was really interesting to see um, what was left and what had been their lives. Um, and, I, you know, I would walk around to these places and I saw people. Um, in particular, I saw Tom Joad. Um, and he, he and I talked for a while um, and then they took me away. Uh, but, but it, um, I, I really felt some kind of connection with it. I, Grapes of Wrath is my favorite book. Um, well used copy by somebody else, not me. Um, I can't find my copy of it, actually, my original copy of it. Um, I, I think it is the quintessential American novel. I don't think anybody has touched it um, over the years. I, and I, that, to me, was my real inspiration for wanting to go to Route 66. Um, it all had to do with the Joad family. It had to do with the struggles they went through. And it had to do with that whole time in our country um, that was going through a lot of changes. So what's left behind? Um, not a lot, actually. Uh, there have been parts that have been um, you know, brought back as tourist traps. There are gas stations that they've you know, rebuilt to look like they were old gas stations. There's uh, lots of that kind of stuff, um, which I had no interest whatsoever in. I don't, just didn't care about it. Um, I wanted to see what was really there. I wanted to feel what the people had felt, who had given up everything, they had nothing. And they, they migrated through all the, the dust storms and through all of the tragedies that their families underwent. And I wanted to find their spirit. I wanted to find those people, and I wanted to learn from them. Um, and you can call the people in to have me sit down on their couch afterwards, um, but I really felt like I did. I could feel that spirit. I could feel that kind of strength of character that those people had um, as, we, as we traveled um, these areas. And I'll talk about some of the individual photos in a bit, and then we can open things up. But um, We photographed what was left behind. Um, during, oh, I know what I wanted to tell you, that Eisenhower, who we all seem to have a lot of respect for, actually did Route 66 in, because he built Highway 40, which took the troops from the same route that Route 66 was going to go. And at that point, Route 66, it didn't shut down, but it became much less used when Eisenhower built Route 40. Um, what's it generated? Literature, Grapes of Wrath, um, I still think, I'll say it again, is the quintessential American novel. Um, it, songs. Get your kicks on Route 66. Bobby Troop wrote that. Um, and here's a little interesting piece about him. He was actually, um, had a PhD, um, and he was Dr. Joe Early on the TV series Emergency. Um, so here he was, he was writing songs, he was acting on TV, um, and he played opposite his real wife, and special star for anybody who can tell me who, who his wife was, who played in Emergency? No? Nobody taking? Julie London. Um, yes. Yeah. So he had a PhD in economics that he got from the Wharton School. Um, so he was, he was a bright guy. Um, it also generated songs. Get your kicks on Route 66, done by probably more artists, singing artists, than any other song I know of. Um, people like the Rolling Stones, Chuck Berry, Depeche Mode. Yes. Um, Ella Fitzgerald, Bing Crosby, Sammy Davis Jr., Anita Bryant, The Wallflower Complexion, 
Anybody know that group? I didn't either. Um, Stick Shift Annie. And my favorite one, my favorite one, the cramps. <laughs> and I was looking them up. <laughs> um, I was looking them up and trying to figure out what some of their songs were. Um, so they, they did things like Zombie Drama, Strict Nine, and I'm Cramped. <laughs> the song I'm Cramped consisted of them saying that I think it's six or seven times with some kind of not really psychedelic music in the background, but that was the extent of the whole song. Um, I did not find, and I know it's out there, but I did not find um, their version of Route 66 to listen to. Um, I'm not sure I really want to. Um, but um, he also wrote such songs as Snooty Little Cutie, which Frank Sinatra recorded. Um, and then came the movie, Grapes of Wrath. And who starred in that? Henry Fonda. Henry Fonda. Um, great show. TV show starring Martin Milner and George Maharis. And even Alan Alda appeared on that show. And you now know what color the uh, Corvette was not. Um, and interestingly enough, in spite of it being called Route 66 and with the Corvette and all that, there were very few scenes in that TV show that were actually on the road. Um, I don't know why, but that's it. Um, so how did I get there? Um, I got there with a group of four people. Um, a, a friend of, of my aunt Nancy Osgood, who's sitting right there, um, is an avid photographer, and she connected me with him. And uh, he and I and two other people have gone on five trips? Five, six, seven? <laughs> a fair number. A fair number. And we've gone to Route 66 um, three times. Um, we did not do the last section of it, only because that's um, one of the people on the trip gets on Google Earth and he goes and looks at all the sites along the way to, to scout it out and set it up. And he, he finally got frustrated and said, there really is nothing very interesting in the last part of it. So um, I don't think we're going to go do that. Um, we started in Oklahoma, and Oklahoma has probably the, the largest number. We didn't start in Oklahoma, but Oklahoma has probably the largest number of surviving buildings that are still up. Um, some of them are in good shape. Some of them are not in good shape. Um, but one of the things we did not do was go to the tourist traps. We drove past them, and they are there. Um, we did stop at one gas station um, that had been restored, um, but that's because it was in a town that hadn't been that we wanted to see. That was in the, uh, uh, no, 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 where's the picture? Well, it's around somewhere. I'll figure it out later. Um, oh, I know. It's, it's the one with the chairs where it says Family Warehouse. And by the way, did any, did any of you notice how they spelled warehouse? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lots of spellings. Yeah, lots of interesting spellings. But in that particular case, the warehouse was actually used to be filled with shirts. So I like to think that they were making a play on words. I don't know. Um, but I like to think that. And that's the fun of going to something from the past, is that you can have your own fantasies, and nobody can correct them or say you're wrong. Um, we didn't go to tourist traps. We didn't do any of that. Um, we did, I did, make the other three, not make, I couldn't make them do it, but I suggested the other three all read Grapes of Wrath before we went. Um, one person actually had admitted that he had not read it before. Um, this was a very well-educated person. Um, and I think it was an eye-opener for them to have read it and then see, as it was for me too, to see what was there. Um, so that's, that's really where my inspiration came from. Um, he said he wanted to rip the reader's nerves to rags. He uh, celebrated the workers and their unionization. Um, he was called communist. He was called all kinds of names. 
Steinbeck was. Um, but it's interesting because this book became the first book of the month for the whatever it is book club. Uh, it also won a Pulitzer Prize, and Steinbeck himself won the Nobel Prize in the 60s. Uh, about it, so the story is about Tom Jode and his family. It's about migration, poverty, class warfare, decimation of land, the fault of the government. Um, so it really, it, it was a lot of things that went on that I tried to find. I wanted to experience. Um, and I could do it with a camera. Um, I probably could have done it walking around, but I don't think so. For me, a camera is a way to see where I don't normally tend to look at. Um, you know, the, the barn there. Now, it's a corrugated barn. And it was not one of the sites that had been found by the person who does the research. But I walked over a hill, and there it was. And if you walk past that barn, it changes colors. So it's corrugated metal. So every step, you've got a new barn in there. But what was interesting to me, aside from that, and more importantly than that, was that I felt I could feel what, was, what used to go on in that barn. I looked in the windows, and I didn't climb all the way in because I wasn't trusting it. But I could see what kind of a life had been lived there, the old equipment for farming um, that took so much energy out of somebody. Um, and it, it, uh, I just found it very moving. And I continued to find people in all of these. Um, so that was one that I, that I loved. Um, the one with the curtain was the town hall of the small town. Um, and uh, waited a long time for the wind to blow that just right. This is, the, this is part of the Avon Motel. The Avon Motel, you'll see if you, if you look up Route 66, you'll find photos of it. Um, it's obviously not still open, um, but it was a classic motel. Um, and that's the same as, as this one over here. And you can see there were separate buildings, and there are actually, I think, were two more that were just foundations. Um, but that was where people stopped. If they had the money, they could spend the night in a motel. Um, if they didn't, they camped on the side of the road. And so there's all kinds of history inside those. There's their sign. Um, I don't know why they had to be called the Avon Motel. Everybody calls it the Avon Motel. There's a lot of Avon motels around. Uh, but anyway, so that's in, in a window, one of them. The outhouse. I'm fascinated by outhouses. I was actually going to do a series of photographs on them, but then I, I didn't. Um, but I, I've never seen one that had metal over it. That's really kind of nice, a tin outhouse. I, that was quite well taken care of. Um, and then the, the poem. The, I don't know if you've read it, but it's the old poem about uh, he ends up saying, uh, I, um, I'm now a man, but nonetheless, I'll try the children's hole, because he had talked about as a kid almost falling through the hole there. Um, this was, a, for me, it brought it around, because this was a poem that hung on the outhouse, not where I grew up, um, but where my grandparents had a camp up in Maine for hunting and fishing, and they had this hanging on the outhouse. Um, so again, it, it, it tied it together for me. My, Photography is personal. It really is. Um, I get involved with what it is I'm taking photos of. Um, by the way, they used to close the, the door and turn the, the, the latch so that it was closed and go up lake. And uh, one day they did that, and then somebody said, where's Peg? <laughs> she had been locked in the outhouse. She was not happy. Um, and if my grandmother was not happy, nobody else was going to be happy either. <laughs> um, she was a wonderful, wonderful woman. But so that's the kind of thing that pulled me into it. Um, I really am not good at photographing something that I can't find a relationship in. Um, this is the Mother Road itself. Um, interestingly enough, I, there was a, a pickup truck that stopped because I was lying on the road. Actually, I was standing in the ditch. Um, and uh, he stopped, and we got talking, and he said his father used to drive that road every day to go to work. Um, he was there with his pickup. 
Um, so the rest are ones that uh, I'll go through with you. Um, that's the best thing I can say. <laughs> this one, I'll tell you why I liked it, and if, I, I would appreciate it if you would ask questions or disagree with me, um, because my photography is personal in many ways. Um, and so by that, I don't mean that it, I'm sensitive about it. I mean that it's, it's what I found interesting. Um, and I'd love to know whether, whether it involves you also. Um, this is the old pickup truck and the windmill. Just struck me as being so classic for that area. Out in the middle of a field, you know, with a shed that's falling apart. Um, somebody's taken a few shots at the, at the, the truck. Um, I actually had a truck that was probably about that same, would you say that's about the same era? Probably. Yeah, that I loved. Um, that was my grandmother's too. Hmm? It a, yeah, it was in much better shape. <laughs> it really was. Um, I also, it also struck me that how flat it is, um, and we New Englanders, notice those kinds of things. Um, but I love the, the shape of the clouds and the way they sort of swept in um, was interesting to me. Um, this was a, a, a cabin that I don't think I actually went in, but I may have. Um, and again, I could feel, you know, this was something that, that had been built while people were migrating across the country. They stopped built their cabin, tried to farm the land until the Dust Bowl came. Um, again, I could see people working in the fields. I could see people working around the house um, in my mind. Can you all see them? They're right there. They'll talk to you even. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that you got one tree that looks almost dead and the other is so alive. Yep, yep. And that was not unusual out there, and that kind of metaphor for being alive and not alive. Um, I could feel the people there. And, and when you think about it, this tree here was probably very small, if at all there, when that was built. And yet this one, the one that's dead, is, had grown and gone through all of that. This one cracked me up, um, shoes in the tree. Uh, and what also interested me was that out there, in some areas, they just have a, a, a letter for the street. Rather than getting involved in trying to give a street name, who to name it after, um, they'd use a letter. So that was Z Street. Don't know where it went. We didn't go down that road. Um, but the shoes were there. I, I don't know about you folks, but what, what does it mean if shoes are hung up over the wires? Do you see that on occasion? Uh, here in uh, LA, it's gang related. Is it? <laughs> ah. I, I, it used to I be. I, I noticed that and I said, I was visiting my mom in LA and I said, why does someone take that ugly bunch of sneakers off of that? <laughs> <laughs> and I went, well, what is it out there? <laughs> What's the yeah. there? Now, it, in a lot of places, it's, it's the seniors the night before graduation go and throw their shoes up in the trees and they get caught. Um, there was a time in the cities where it used to indicate where drugs were. If you had thrown the shoes up over the wire, you know, you could go in and get some drugs. But once the police figured that out, they didn't use that anymore. Not very discreet. Um, no. <laughs> Not at all. Um, and again, remember in all of this time that there still were the haves and the have-nots. You know, the, the, most of the people were poor and still moving on, but there were, you know, there were cities that were there, there were towns that were there, um, and there were some people who were doing just fine um, in those. But that's, they're, they're not there anymore. Um, you know, most of these towns, well, the beat of, the can't beat it with a stick sale. Um, we saw a few people walking around. There was a little luncheon place in that town. 
um, in a little grocery store. But I don't know, you know, I don't know why it stayed there. Mm -hmm. question, if I may. Uh, I love your work, but um, so, so I agree that people are present, but they're present by their objects. Yes, right? OK, and good point. Talking about each of these, I mean, I don't think there's a single physical person in any of them. And I gather that was a conscious choice. Yes. On your part. And what, yes. Why was, was it because you're trying to connect with the, what was present at the time? 66 was a vibrant highway to the west, or what was your thinking? It's an interesting question. I did take a couple of pictures of people. Um, one, we didn't see very many. Um, there really weren't a lot around in these places. Um, and uh, so it was not, you know, it wasn't an easy thing to do. I had to go find somebody to take a picture. And I took a couple, but they, did, they looked like people. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's interesting. It's interesting you bring that up because I, we, Betsy and I have been to Cuba three times, and I've photographed down there, and I've done a lot of people in Cuba, um, but they're just the people. There weren't enough people for them to be part of, for me to feel that they were part of what it was that I was photographing. I guess is the best way to say that. It's a great question. Yeah. So you read my travels with Charlie. Oh, a long time ago, I did. Yes. Yep. That would be really interesting. Yeah. 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 Huh. And it's Steinbeck again, who I love. Um, that's a, I'm going to go back and read that again. It was what? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, um, well, I'll talk with you about Steinbeck later. <laughs> I can go on for a long time. Um, this one, again, is, is, is actually standing in one of those and looking out to the back. And you can see the kind of condition that some of these are still in, which is, you know, there's still some wonderful colors. I doubt they were the same colors back when it was in operation. Um, they probably faded a great deal. But you can look, I, anyway, for me, I, I would look at this and I can imagine being there for the night, looking out through a window like that. Um, and knowing that I had to pack up the next day and get out of there, because you weren't welcome to stay for very long in those places. Um, this was a waiting room in a gas station. Now, there were no gas pumps out there anymore, but remember the old waiting rooms and gas stations when you actually could sit down and wait while your car was getting fixed? Because you didn't go to the deal, you know, there weren't big dealerships. You had to go to your local gas station. Um, and I just, when I walked in there, I could feel the people waiting for their cars to be fixed. Um, you know, the, 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 the bathrooms were old, old, old fixtures, if there were any left at all um, in that. And there were, you know, these kinds of places. This actually was a self-serve, so this was not original, because um, that didn't come in until, I don't know. Eight. Yeah, I was well grown up by the time, well, if it was the 80s, um, I really wasn't grown up then. I may have been older, but I wasn't grown up. Um, this was just out in the middle of nowhere. There was literally nothing else around it. And for some reason, it was left standing. Um, and I thought, well, that's, I also just happen to love the fact that the way you can look through this part of it and just see the, the flat plain that's there, um, and nothing inside that one. Um, Where are these places? Like, what estates are some of these pictures? Um, that taken? Oh, boy, that's a great question. Um, a lot of these are taken in Oklahoma. Um, those two were not. I'm trying to remember where those were taken. Those were the second trip. Um, I don't know where those were taken, but these were all Oklahoma. Um, the Coca-Cola sign. Um, it, in the Midwest, you see lots of murals on buildings, um, many of them beautiful artwork, uh, really, really nice. You also see advertising on them. 
And this sign obviously had been repainted, um, but there it was in a town, it was a small town, not much going on. Um, a little restaurant we finally were able to get some, some lunch in it. Um, but it just struck me as being classic for that area. Um, and the old Coke bottles, you know, we don't see those anymore. Um, hence, I found the piece about where it came from. I always, I, I don't know if any of you read that, but many people believe that it came from the shape of a woman, which is what I always thought was a kind of fun story. Um, but I'll let you read the, the real story behind it. Um, this one I just found amusing. I found it amusing because here was this old wagon and there's the Greyhound sign right by it. Um, and I, I took it and I thought, uh-oh, we're going to get into the um, politically correct argument. So I, I found somebody who's actually a Native American and I asked and he said, no, not a problem. You know, that's an artifact that was real. And, uh, it was in the a back warehouse at a place. I don't know when the last time they had out, but obviously they'd taken care of it because um, they kept Dr. McCree's, uh, Dr. Eamon McCree's Kickapoo Indian Medicine Show um, next to the Greyhound. So again, it's a relic of an era. Whether we think it was an appropriate era or not is not for us to judge. Um, it was there. Same thing, you know, Bassett's groceries this was the only store that had a sign out here, and it was not operative, operating. There was a little store here that I think was, although it wasn't open when I was there, um, and it sure didn't look very good, but I think it was open. This one, a lot of people end up liking, because it's, it's cute. With the cats in the window, uh, painted, everything's painted. Even Raggedy Andy, or Raggedy Ann, or whoever it is up there, that's strictly a facade. There was no building behind that. Um, it had been torn down. There's a, this building here, this side of it was still there, but this was just a big empty lot behind it. Um, just a wall. Uh, I, I, you know, clearly there had been a building there at one point, but I thought it was great that somebody, and again, I, I, you know, I don't think I saw two people in that town, uh, but somebody had taken the, the time and the effort to put the plywood up and paint it. Um, which I thought was really fun. These were the most comfortable seats I ever sat in because it was really hot and I was exhausted. <laughs> and I think if we had had a van, I would have taken them, brought them home and put them in the basement. Um, but you can't beat it with a stick sale. I just, I found the humor in that. Um, Those were like theater chairs? Or? They were theater chairs, yeah. Um, and very, very soft and cushy and, oh, they felt good. Again, sense of humor, Courage with a C. Actually, that's a picture you, you can see if you go on the internet. Lots of folks have taken pictures of that um, just because it's clever. Hmm? That one I love. I just love this. I don't know if you can see it or if you saw it. I'm not touching that. <laughs> um, what it says is, you break bottles here. I catch you, I break your face. <laughs> break spelled B-R-A-K-E, <laughs> which just cracked me up. Um, and I, I, didn't, I didn't see any broken bottles, so apparently it was working. Because um, I would have loved to have had one in the, in the picture. It would have been fun to have a broken bottle at the bottom of it, but it wasn't there and I wasn't going to put it there. Um, I didn't see anybody anywhere near around that. Um, I, don't, I don't know what was inside it. Um, I could, all the windows and any doors were not passable or look inable, if that's the word. Um, but it goes to show there is a sense of humor out there with Courage and Old Deer. Now, out, this was out in the middle of nowhere, as you can tell. And I, you know, Out West Pub, it's called. Um, an Old Deer? That doesn't sound very appetizing to me. Um, I don't know about you folks, but that doesn't sound like I want to eat it. What it really was, was cold beer. 
And somebody got up there and painted out the C and painted out the middle line in the B. So it had been cold beer, and now it was old deer. Um, again, a great sense of humor out there. And that's the kind of thing that attracts me to it. That's the kind of thing that makes it human for me, um, which, again, is really is part of what I love about this. Is I, 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 can, I can see those people, even in the photos. I don't, I don't know if you can see them or not, but they're there. They really are. Um, this was just an old truck that was interesting. This is actually Route 66. Looks like a railroad bridge. It's Route 66. And I don't know if you remember in the, in the book when, who was it? Was it Al? I can't remember who. It, the, the, the son in the family who was not altogether there. Anyway, he decides to leave the family. And he goes and gets in the river and swims away. And we like to think that that's where Steinbeck was thinking about, was right there. Um, again, I could feel the, all the people camped out there, and I could see him going over and getting in the river, and off he went. Um, poor guy. Anyhow, silos are all over the place out there. It is flat, really flat. Um, and there was a, you know, that was not actually coming in, but it, it was there. This silo was not being used at this point. Um, they were re rebuilding it. And the story that they tell, and I don't think it's, a, I, don't, I think it's true, um, is that quite often the deaths that you hear about in a silo, it's a very dangerous place to be, and oftentimes it's somebody up at the top fixing something who falls in and they then drown, literally, um, because they're inhaling so much of the dust that's up there. Uh, again, so we, we have it pretty easy in some ways. Um, Watson's Barbecue was actually where I found the Kickapoo, um, and the cat just sitting there. I, I, don't, I don't know, there was something really friendly and warm about the cat, but there were no mice around, so I figure the cat was doing its job. Uh, and I don't know if, what folks can see down here. Um, hang on. Mila did an incredible job of hanging this show, by the way. Um, I'm kind of fanatical about hanging and how it gets hung, and Mila wouldn't let me anywhere near the place. Um, and Betsy and I walked in, and just it's just done perfectly. Um, it flows, the right things are together. Um, that's all meal. So, I'll bring these out one at a time. This one has a little story behind it. Um, the old woman by the window and it's a, a, you know, a person, it's a poem. The person walked by us and I always see this woman, woman in the window. Well, she's not there, um, but the wallpaper is. But it just struck me, if there was going to be somebody for that poem, this was the window that she would have been sitting by. Um, and what I like about this also, from an artistic standpoint, is I love the, the textures that are around it. Um, I love the different colors that are muted, but stand out differently. Um, I love the wood. Uh, so that's the kind of thing that gets me too, is, is there's beauty in the old. There's abs I think, there's all kinds of beauty in it. Um, that's a piece, that's a part of the wallpaper. Yeah. It was not in very good shape, obviously. So that's one. Mila, I'm not going to put it back up if that's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, one of the other things we saw a lot of were, in some areas, were yards that were filled with, that looked like a yard sale. Um, only it was all the time. 
This one, this one I walked through probably 25 yards of junk um, to get close enough to take this photo. But you can see the kinds of things that are out here, um, all kinds of stuff. But what interested me the most, one was she had cell up here with her phone number, but she also had a cross. And I don't believe I've seen that in a place where it's just junk out in the yard for sale. Um, I don't know what to make of it. I don't try to make anything of it. It's just my job to observe it and take a picture of it. Um, but I found that interesting. She also had two pickup trucks that were lifted up well over my head, um, standing around. And I don't know why she needed to do that. She wasn't there. I didn't get a chance to ask her. Um, Is this Oklahoma, too? I'm sorry? Is this Oklahoma? Um, no. No, this is New Mexico, I think. But I'm not sure. I'd have to look it up. Um, but we did see a lot of that kind of stuff, with you know, junk for sale out in front of the house. Um, not a lot, but some. Uh, interesting place. And this tennis racket, um, I don't think I ever saw a tennis court. <laughs> Never. Um, anyway, it was... <laughs> that's right, <laughs> that's right. Um, but it was fascinating to me, again, to see the... Um, and I've got more pictures of, of the stuff that was in the yard, because it was all kinds of strange stuff that was in there. I'll trade you. Got it? Yep. Hot Rod Heaven, or Haven, excuse me. Oh, yeah. um, this is the last of them to show you. Um, there was something about the, the blue sky and the blue sign that immediately, oh, what, you guys want to see over there too? <laughs> that immediately, uh, Got, got me. Um, you know, there was no sign of any life around. Uh, and yet the signs look fairly newly painted. Um, but there was nobody there. And it wasn't a Sunday or anything. It was a weekday. Um, but again, you can just see what, what was going on there. You could feel the people who were working in there or had been working in there, but aren't there now. Um, so. Questions? Thoughts? Observations? Yes, sir. I have a Nikon D800 that I use. I've had it for a long time. Um, it's a workhorse. I go with three guys who have Sony 3s and all kinds of fancy dancy stuff. Um, and I have, I have camera envy. I would love to have one of those particular cameras. Uh, but my, you know, it's a, it's a big heavy camera that I use. Um, it does not have vibration reduction. And I don't have very steady hands, so I use a tripod. Uh, but it served me well. Um, most of my shooting is with a um, 24 to 70, and sometimes I'll use a, a 70 to 200, but that's getting to a lot of weight to carry around on an icon. Um, almost all of these. In fact, I don't think any of these were taken with the telephoto. They're all with a 24 to 70. Um, you know, part of it is we could get right up to stuff. Nobody, nobody was there telling us not to. There was one person, um, it, was, it was near where the corrugated barn was taken, and there was a drive-in. Um, and it looked like it was actually still used every once in a while. And there was a sign that said, don't go on the grass. Well, of course, one of the guys, an elderly gentleman, a uh, wonderful guy, went on the grass. At which point, 
this guy came out screaming and just laid into him and said, you will not go on the grass. Can't you read that? <laughs> uh, so anyway, he had, he had a heavy camera too at that point. Um, but most of, for most of the, the time, people were incredibly welcoming, very warm, very thoughtful, um, curious, uh, often said, oh, you know, if you like this, you might go down the street and look at that. Um, and they had stories to tell if you asked them the right question. Um, and then sometimes it was, well, Betsy will tell you, I tend to stay and ask questions and talk and talk and somebody has to come get me. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I'm terrible when I'm with my camera. I go right past no trespassing signs. And absolutely. All of a sudden I'm setting up and this guy backing out of this private yard that has no trespassing, private property, whatever. And I go, oh, I'm going to hear it now. And he goes, oh, taking a picture of the pond. And I said, yes, it's lovely. He says, well, good luck. Waves. Off he went. <laughs> so uh, people are very nice when you're trying to do something. Usually they are. Um, I did get yelled by, at one, by one guy. Um, and I guess I kind of deserved it. But I couldn't figure out, there was a barn. It was an empty barn, old barn. And uh, had some really interesting stuff in it to photograph. And I, I didn't see any people around. Um, and there wasn't a house that looked like it owned it. Um, so I thought, well, all right, I'll go in and take some photos. Well, I, I got in and got my camera set up. And um, I heard some words that I didn't think, I didn't think were appropriate. Um, but he said, he allowed us how it was private property and he would prefer that I would not be there. Um, so I left, obviously, and uh, went and got the other guy that was photographing that area with me. And I said, we need to go. Um, and that's, you know, I, it's, I don't like to do that. If I can ask permission, um, I usually ask permission. Um, but I also like to go as Betsy will tell you, to a lot of places that are a little different. Um, <laughs> she's smirking over there. Um, I, I, did, I did just finish a series on a house in Newport, Rhode Island, built in 1751. And it was, um, it was being redone. And I was walking around Newport with my camera, and so I went up to knock on the door and I said, you know, is the owner here? And the guy said, no. And I said, well, would you give him my card? I'd really like to photograph. I like old buildings. And he said, sure. And the next day, you know, usually you figure you're going to walk away and nothing's going to happen. But the next day I got an email and he said, uh, you're more than welcome to come shoot anytime, anywhere. Um, but I am having trouble with the historical commission. And so I need pictures of the windows inside and out. I thought, well, that's fair. No problem. 55 windows. <laughs> 55 windows. But then he did. He gave me absolutely free reign. Um, and he had torn all the walls out. He was redoing stuff. And, um, but it was fascinating. And he let me crawl around wherever I wanted to be. And you get the best pictures when you do that, um, I think. Betsy's over there going, oh my god, he almost died. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was, you know, and so that's as you can see, you gotta, you gotta walk, you gotta get on your feet and go find the places. Um, and it's, it's really fun. So um, have you ever put together a book of all of these? Or? I have. Didn't I leave some here? I didn't? Oh. Um, if <laughs> you can look it up on Blurb if you want, or if if you want, um, I'd be happy to send one to you. Um, it's just got a lot of these same pictures in it um, and a little writing that I did along with it. Along with it. Um, so you can pick up my cards, they're on the back table. Um, I, I think I have three or four copies of the book. Hmm? And I can always get more. Or you can go directly to Blurb. It's called Route 66, isn't it? No. Because it's the email you're looking for. That's true. Um, and my email's on the card, so you can email me. Um, and they, they are for sale. Um, 
Somebody's got to pay the tuition, so. <laughs> no, we're past that stage. What were you driving for a vehicle? We, we rented a, a, van. a van. Yeah, and there's, there was four of us, and so we all could fit in with our gear. I mean, it was, geometry paid off. I mean, there's a lot of camera gear that we had to pack up each day, because it was rare we stayed in the same place two nights. And the condition of the roads? Um, we went from everything from a super highway to dirt. Uh, and everything in between. Um, for the most part, to get off to these pl kinds of places, well, this was a decent road, um, but it, most of them were not particularly good uh, where we were going. But that's because where those houses were and where the people were it was not on the, 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 the road, not on the passageways. They were way off it. Um, and a lot of falling down houses, a lot of stuff in, in really ill repair out there. Uh, so we did how, have to be careful. How would you characterize the spirit of the people? Uh, because these visitors captured all these white decay and you just use those words, but um, was, we, was there pride? Was there we, didn't, we didn't see, well, lunch, dinner, um, the motel. We didn't see a lot of people at these places. But when we did for lunch, for instance, I'd pick their brains. They were all very kind, upbeat, very nice, um, except for that one guy who threw me out of his barn. Um, <laughs> but no, I th they were very kind people that, that we saw. Um, and you know, some of the tourist traps that have been remade, we stayed away from. So I don't know who we would have found, found there, but probably tourists that we didn't want to see. Um, so have you so. thought of any other series that you'd like to do? Oh, <laughs> how long do we have? <laughs> um, I, we, Betsy and I have done three trips to Cuba. So I've done a lot of work on Cuba, and I would love to continue to That's do more changing, of that. Isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. Um, and I, but I would love to continue to do more of that. Um, I, find that I find Cuba fascinating. Um, Nancy's been with us on one trip down there. Um, it's really, really interesting. And some of that is on my website. More will be because I now have somebody taking care of my website, sitting back behind your right shoulder. Um, and I don't know, I'm about to start a, 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 a series on flowers, not just regular shots of flowers. I mean, there's a million of those out there. Uh, but I want, to do, I want to do some work with a little bit of, of Photoshop. And I, I happened upon it with one flower I took, and so now I'm going to try to do more, which is I left the flower bright. And behind it was a lot of growth. And what I did was desaturate that. You still could see it. It was there, but it was desaturated. And it, I found the contrast really interesting. Um, so I think I'm going to explore that a little bit and see what happens with that. Um, I've been doing a, more landscape. Um, I go over, to, there's a place in Newport where I can go and crawl around and do good landscape. That's North Dakota. North Dakota. Did a trip there and I'm doing, we're doing another trip there. Um, that's pretty bleak up there. There's not many people and, and again, the, the group likes to do old houses. So we had somebody who was, had taken, used to take photographers up there and uh, we went and, and uh, it was fascinating. Some great old buildings. A couple of outhouses, yeah. And uh, we, we found that the, I don't drink wine, but the other guys do. Probably. It's there are a lot of abandoned farms out there. Um, it's, it, as a New Englander, um, when you can't see a hill anywhere for miles and miles, it's not, I'm not good at that. Um, but we, you know, again, you get into those old farms, you start wandering around and, and you look at what they've left and you start feeling them there. 
you start knowing what their lives were a little more like, it's knowing a little more like, knowing a little more about what their lives were like. It's not that hard a sentence. Um, you find out was, old, solar holes are, are old places where they dumped their yep. things and you can really get a sense of their history. Yep, yep. And some of these houses still have a few things left. There's, there's uh, a photo I took that Betsy hung in her office for quite a while, just of a, a coat hanging on a hook. And there it was. The colors were incredible on the wall, uh, but there was nothing else in the house. Um, but somebody had left it there. So, and yet, again, that's how you find, for me, it's the people I imagine. Uh, really fun. Any other questions? No? Take a card, let me know. Um, and, uh, How long are, is this um, supposed to be up for? I got February asked. February 1st. Okay. Right. I was telling someone about it today, and they said, well, how long is it going to be there? And I said, I think it's going to be a month. <laughs> yeah, I'll be back up to pick it up. It works um, like two blocks away, and I think you can run up. Yeah, that's right. No excuse not to make it. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much, so, Rich. Yes, thank you. Ah, you're welcome. Thank you. And again, take a card and email me if you have questions or thoughts. If you just want to respond, go ahead and, and email me. I'll be interested to hear what you think. <laughs>